Hey everyone, how's it going? Welcome to a new installment of the series here on H&E called Pop Culture 101. And in this series, we introduce and break down characters, teams, and more belonging to upcoming or current TV or film franchises. Our goal with this series is to help viewers feel confident in their knowledge about a topic, explore it so they can better understand and engage with any medium relating to that topic. So in this episode, we'll explore Ben Solo, aka Kylo Ren, which was a character introduced in the Disney and Lucasfilm Star Wars sequel trilogy with The Force Awakens. Portrayed by acclaimed actor Adam Driver, Ben Solo is the last biological descendant of the Skywalker and Solo family bloodlines. One of the most dynamic and conflicted individuals throughout the Star Wars film saga, Ben Solo aka Kylo Ren is perceived by many to be the mascot of the sequel trilogy. And similar to his grandfather Vader, Kylo's conflicted nature resulted in a redemption back into Ben Solo before his unfortunate passing in an attempt to revive his dyad counterpart in the Force, who is Rey Palpatine, later going by the name of Rey Skywalker. Now, if you want to go into his publication history, Ben Solo, aka the villainous Kylo Ren, was a character always intended to appear in a continuation of Star Wars. This was apparent in versions of the story by George Lucas himself, as he had outlined that the son of Han Solo and Leia Organa would struggle with the dark side of the Force. Outside of that, no other details were concrete from Lucas, which allowed Lucasfilm to mold a new character for a new generation of fans. And at one point, known as Skyler, and then later on as a Jedi Killer, a name used until production officially began, it was intended for the character to always have visual influences from Darth Vader. The in-canon belief was that Vader's design wasn't unique to simply him, and that the Sith would have similar appearances for certain Sith Lords of either different ranks or titles. And another take on the character, which was very unique to me personally, was Jedi Killer utilizing the ability to consume matter through suns and stars. And this was shown in concept art with the character in a meditation chamber, absorbing the energy that entered the area, and presumably an ability granted by the Force. When J.J. Abrams was deep in pre-production and took over screenwriting duties, he kind of erased all that and instead saw Kylo Ren as the connective tissue between the original trilogy heroes, with some help from the Lucasfilm creative team and the ambitions to make him more of a Vader wannabe, Kylo Ren became fully realized as the character you saw in The Force Awakens. For his fictional origins, Kylo Ren was born as Ben Solo in the year 5 ABY on the planet Chadrilla, named after the legendary Jedi Master Obi-Wan Kenobi. And as the son of Princess Leia Organa and Han Solo, and also the nephew of legendary Jedi Luke Skywalker, Ben inherited the Skywalker bloodline's incredible connection to the Force established through his grandfather Anakin Skywalker. And before his birth, it was noted by his mother how strong in the Force he was to the point where she could sense his conflicted nature during pregnancy. And after his birth, he enjoyed a strong Force bond with his mother while looking up to his father and uncles Lando and Chewbacca as well. Through his father and uncles, Ben would learn how to pilot small crafts and use certain weapons. And this influence would actually inspire Ben to dream of becoming a pilot one day, just like his father Han Solo, as he was blessed with natural piloting skills as well as using the force like his grandfather Anakin did. Unfortunately, his parents were consumed by their professional ambitions as Ben grew older, leaving him with a sense of abandonment and resentment. While Ben was always strong in the force, his raw potential flourished by the time he was 10 years old, and unable to think of a better way to deal with his conflicted nature, Leia sent Ben to train with his uncle Luke Skywalker. And under Luke's training, Ben would help restart the Jedi Order for the next era of the galaxy. Ben quickly devoted himself to the Jedi teachings, enjoying trips to distant planets, allowing him to collect Jedi artifacts and rediscover lost history. Specifically, Ben had an interest in ancient weapons used by the Jedi. His grandfather's identity as Darth Vader was kept secret from him, as fear of that information leaking out would lead to him going towards the dark side. And from this feeling, Ben became vulnerable to the communications of Snoke. Now Snoke would proceed to telepathically communicate with Ben in order to gain his trust and confidence. And during these times of communication, Snoke would slowly plant seeds of doubt about Luke, the Jedi Order, and other things in Ben's life to make him feel kind of more pushed away from that and more towards Snoke. Now during a mission to Elfrana, the location of a potential higher public era Jedi outpost, Ben was with Luke Skywalker when they were attacked by Ren and his Knights of Ren. While Ben didn't participate with the battle, it left an impression as Ren could sense Ben's pull towards the dark side. As a first student of the new Jedi Order, Ben was known as the strongest without needing to necessarily push himself or prove himself to anyone. 
and this actually created some tension with other students like Vo. And while others like Ta became close friends with Ben and tried helping him deal with the pressures of being the legendary Luke Skywalker's nephew, other students didn't really share that same kind of friendship, so to speak. And Ben began to feel more isolated yet again, leaving him more vulnerable yet again as well to Snoke's influence. And at 23 years old with over a decade of Jedi training, Ben Solo finally learned the truth that his grandfather is Darth Vader. Around this time as well, Luke Skywalker started sensing the darkness within Ben, stimulated by Snoke, causing him to have moments of fear towards his nephew. At one of these moments, Ben perceived it as an attempt on his life, and it caused him to strike back out of instinct. In the aftermath, the Jedi Temple with various students were killed by a powerful storm, although Ben attempted to save them. Snoke then seduced Ben to join him at Snoke's undisclosed location. Once there, Snoke directed Ben to seek out the Knights of Ren, Ben also during this time is being tailed by three surviving Jedi students. During an initial conflict with them, Ben accidentally kills one of them named Hennix, and later on he joins with the Knights of Ren, and Ben travels with them to the Mind Moon of Minban. And once there, the surviving students reach out to Ben, with his best friend Ta attempting to bring Ben back to the light, but Ren intervenes, snapping the guy's neck. This action, along with Ren mocking Ben, pushes Ben Solo over the edge with anger to the point where the disturbance could be felt across the galaxy. Causing a battle between Ren and Ben Solo, Solo kills Ren and in the process becomes the new master of the Knights of Ren. Ben also from here kills the final student personally before bleeding his kyber crystal from blue to red with such force that the crystal cracks. He then inserts the volatile crystal into a cross guard lightsaber while adopting the persona of Kylo Ren. And from this moment, Kylo becomes the apprentice of Supreme Leader Snoke, helping him reclaim the former Empire's glory across the galaxy. As the descendant of Anakin Skywalker, Ben Solo was born with vast raw potential in the Force. During his training as a Jedi student, he was considered a prodigy compared to his fellow students. This translated more towards physical uses of the Force more so than spiritual capabilities, although he was also skilled at things like meditation when he attempted it. The only being in the galaxy Ben feared was stronger was Luke Skywalker a fear that motivated his urge to find and eliminate him by any means. Ben was also motivated to attain a legendary power of a being such as Darth Vader, something he felt was his birthright as his grandson. In trademark abilities were telekinesis, mind probing, and force stasis, which he often used as Kylo Ren to stop energy bolts in midair. Ren could also manipulate how others read his thoughts and feelings, which he often did to deceive Snoke. By the time Ben became Kylo Ren and during the events of The Force Awakens, he was a highly skilled and advanced combatant. Using both Jedi and Snoke's dark side teachings, he could easily outclass most threats. He would also amplify his combat skills using the Force, which he would do to augment either his strength, his durability, his speed, or his healing when necessary. With the lightsaber, he could also battle all six Knights of Ren at the same time, killing each one just to demonstrate his combat skills. Ben was gifted as a pilot and he was noted as being remarkably evasive during combat situations, along with being almost impossibly accurate, to the point where he could make an improbable shot with a single blast on the first attempt. He could also modify his ship as needed to push his performance and systems. Now, if you want to go deeper with the character of Kylo Ren, Ben Solo, Kylo Ren, you know, many fans naturally stumble upon Jason Solo, aka Darth Cadis, from the Legends canon. And in this canon, Jason Solo was the son of Han Solo and Leia Organa, who became a great Jedi hero until his desire to provide order and stability across the galaxy led him to fall to the dark side. Now, unlike Ben Solo, Jason had a twin sister named Jana Solo, who eventually ended his reign of terror as the latest Sith Lord in the galaxy. And like Anakin, Jason was largely motivated by a powerful vision of the future he had, which propelled him to go towards such extreme methods. Now when looking at the character of Ben Solo, especially during his time as Kylo Ren, his personality could be described as unstable, fragmented, and narcissistic. As Ben Solo before he was redeemed, he's rather insecure, susceptible, and cocky. This allows him to become swayed by Snoke when he felt isolated from his family, and it also helps him as a student, as his desire to be the strongest makes him willing to study under powerful masters like Snoke and Luke Skywalker. Unfortunately, this also results in abusive relationships between Snoke and Kylo Ren, and a perfect embodiment of this manipulation is when Snoke says, powerless men often turn to anger and lash out blindly. Powerful beings can therefore use their rage as a weapon. In the final film, Star Wars The Rise of Skywalker, Ben Solo returns from the figurative ashes of Kylo Ren. Connected through the Force with the other lead character Rey, that bond is finally revealed to be an extraordinary rare type of Force bond called the Force Dyad. 
In this connection bonds the two individuals regardless of their affiliation with the force physically, mentally, emotionally, or spiritually. This also allows them to communicate across vast distances in the galaxy as if they were in front of each other, as well as transporting objects across space-time to one another. They can also amplify the other's abilities in the Force when working in unison, making the true limits of their bonds almost uncertain due to the short-lived exploration of them throughout the sequel trilogy. Now a final note regarding Ben Solo and Kylo Ren is that I found it interesting that he actually accomplished the one thing his ancestor Anakin couldn't, which is Ben, during the end of The Rise of Skywalker, being able to save the life of the woman he loved through the Force. Unfortunately, this was at the cost of his own life, although the Rise of Skywalker novelization states that Ben Solo was welcomed into the Force without hesitation. That's really it for the 101 on Ben Solo aka Kylo Ren. Let us know what you guys thought down below, who would you like us to do next, and we'll see you guys later.